Hi, I'm Rachel Werner. I'm the Executive Director of Penn's Leonard Davis Institute for Health Economics. I'm here today with Atul Gupta. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Atul Gupta. I'm an Assistant Professor at the Wharton School and Senior Fellow at LDI. So we're here today to talk about Atul's new paper on privatization of U.S. hospitals. So Atul, the number of private hospitals in the U.S. has declined a lot over the past quarter of a century by, by about 40%. Mm -hmm. Why is that? We know that uh, uh, public hospitals tend to be unprofitable and therefore they need ongoing government subsidies. And over the past few decades, local governments have been more and more reluctant to put in those subsidies. And so what did your paper find? What happens when uh, these companies buy public hospitals? I think there's two main findings. On, on, or for the government's perspective, they do help these hospitals become modestly profitable. So potentially they may not need ongoing subsidies. Uh, and you could say that that's probably a good thing. Uh, on the other hand, we also find that they actually start serving fewer patients. And then specifically, the, there's a disproportionate reduction in the number of Medicaid patients served by these hospitals. So if they're no longer admitting patients with Medicaid insurance, how do they go about uh, denying those in, uh, admissions? We speculate there's mainly two ways to do this. Uh, one is, you know, a large fraction of patients come to the hospital through the emergency room. We do not find a decline in the, in the number of patients coming to the emergency room. Uh, but then at the emergency room, the hospital does have discretion on who gets admitted as an inpatient. So we think that that's one place where they can exercise that discretion, discretion strategically to reduce the fraction of Medicaid patients. The other way, which is a little bit more general, is uh, there are services that are unprofitable and, and are well known as being unprofitable. And it's also well known that uh, Medicaid and uninsured patients tend to uh, disproportionately use these services. So the private entity may decide that you know they don't want, they want to shift their focus away from these unprofitable services. So that's not designed to reduce Medicaid patients, but it may have the effect of reducing Medicaid patients. So it sounds like your results have uh, important implications for equity in healthcare. What are those implications? Yeah. So I think it's it's. Uh, fairly reasonable to assume uh, that uh, this privatization effect on access to care will disproportionately hit people who are more vulnerable. So not just income, but also you know minorities and people of color. And are there implications for Medicaid and the effectiveness of Medicaid versus having a public hospital? This whole thing is actually reducing the effectiveness of Medicaid because Medicaid's value as a safety net program reduces if the insurance is not acceptable to providers. So if you were able to uh, get the ear of a policymaker, what would you tell them to address this problem? The first thing just to take away is that you know, when, you, when you do these privatizations and you write the contracts for the private entity that's taking over uh, you know, to put in place some protection provisions uh, that actually ha that have some real teeth. Uh, so that's one thing, to, to ensure that they maintain access to care. The second thing is, <clears throat> if the, the question is really about ongoing subsidies, uh, you know, one potential thing to look into is instead of selling the hospital or, or letting it be run by a private entity, potentially the state could you know, give some assistance to local entities to, to maintain those hospitals. The third thing is, uh, I mentioned this earlier, that some markets we find a reduction in access to care. Well, those markets have some specific features. One is that they tend to be the more concentrated hospital markets. And two, they also tend to be markets which are uh, lower income. Uh, and so I think that gives us some hints about if there is a proposed privatization on the anvil, uh, the state can actually proactively think about, is this a market where perhaps patients might get worse off if we do a privatization? So it's not antitrust per se, but I think it still deserves potentially extra scrutiny.